spinoffs. They are great in television. Uh, think The Jeffersons and Law and Order SVU, but not so much when investing in stocks. Hi, I'm John McNeil, and this is the Invest Strong Network. Welcome. So over the many years that I've invested in stocks of various sorts, periodically uh, companies will spin off uh, operations that no longer fit their core competency. They'll cobble them together and basically doyle them out to shareholders in the form of an official spinoff. Now, these shares are then uh, listed on one of the exchanges and um, you can basically purchase the shares. And, and if you are a uh, shareholder of the parent company, the mother company that we'll call it for the sake of this particular video, then you get like, wow, a, a free uh, bonus stock for investing in the mother company. Great, right? Well, not necessarily. Let me tell you why. These are something, these are things to look out for uh, when uh, you are given shares of a, a spinoff company. Uh, look for these things because uh, that will really determine whether this is a viable company to own the shares of or is this just some uh, maneuver that the mother company is doing to basically get rid of garbage assets that they no longer want. All right. Now, in this vid, what I'll do is I will talk about five spinoffs that I have received over the last few years. And I, what I want to do is compare the performance of the spinoff company to the performance of the mother company and, and see what lessons we can learn from that, right? Now, why would a mother company want to spin off certain operations? Well, there are a myriad of reasons. Now, like I mentioned, first of all, what they will say is that, well, these subsidiaries, um, they, no long, they no longer fit our core competency. And that's, in fact, very likely, right? Because during the course of business in the United States of America, you have these companies that are branching out into new territories, or they may acquire uh, units hither and thither, all as a part of their regular day-to-day -day business. And over time, what will happen is that the mother company will acquire all these subsidiary functions that they're not really crazy about having in their portfolio of operations, and they're actually desperate to kind of discharge them, right? Now, sometimes they'll sell them to other, they'll just sell the operations outright to another company. Uh, but uh, what happens much more frequently is that they'll just spin off the whole thing to the shareholders. Now, uh, sometimes that works out fine, right? I mean, I think about uh, AT&T uh, divesting itself of Agilent Technologies or, uh, or other uh, situations where uh, this has worked out really, really well for both shareholders, right, of the parent company and the uh, subsidiary. Again, I think another great example would be Advi, right, which was essentially uh, spun off from Abbott Laboratories in 2013. Both Abbott Labs and Advi have both performed fabulously over the last seven years, right? So those are examples of, of, of good um, spinoffs that benefit all parties involved. But sometimes, and, and I think more often, what will happen is that a company will take subsidiary functions that are not growing, right? perhaps even not profitable at all. Or what they'll do is they will take a subsidiary function, load it up with a lot of debt from the mother company, and then spin it out uh, to shareholders and basically discharge the mother company of all of the debts and, and kind of dead weight assets. Uh, and so the mother company can then pay you know, a consistent dividend, they can grow 
uh, much faster uh, now that they've discharged all of this dead weight and basically laid it at the feet of their shareholders or perhaps even new shareholders who would buy, who would purchase the shares. Now, these are definitely things you wanna look out for. And so I'm gonna go down the list of five that uh, have been spun out uh, to myself and, and really see which category these particular spinoffs fall into. All right, now the first one I want to talk about is HP Enterprises. That's ticker symbol HPE, which was spun off from HP, the old Hewlett Packard, back in 2015. Now, HP Enterprises basically does data analysis and other things kind of, you know, kind of difficult for me to figure out exactly how they make their money, right? And because see, the old HP was an equipment maker, correct? It made copiers, printers, PCs, um, and, and it was rather clear how they operated, much less so with HP Enterprises, right? Now, when, H, when HP, the mother company, spun them off in 2015, they basically loaded up HP Enterprises with a bunch of debt and dead weight and things like that. And absolutely, HP Enterprises, their share price has lagged the performance of the mother company significantly since 2015, right? And so the, this one, I would have to say, certainly is not a success, at least not of, not as of this moment. The second one I want to bring your attention to is Bell Ring Brands. That's ticker symbol BRBR, -B -R, which was essentially spun out from Post Holdings, Post Holdings being the serial maker, uh, uh, back in 2018. Now, Bell Ring Brands was basically the nutritional supplements and nutritional bar subsidiary of Post, right? Not the core cereal that we're familiar with. And so uh, basically Post wanted to spin that off. Well, Bell Ring Brands does not pay a dividend uh, because it actually has quite a bit of debt, right? Courtesy of the mother company. But uh, Bell Ring Brands has performed about equivalent to the performance of Post Holdings in the post spinoff period, right? And so uh, both of those both of those brands have lagged the the broader market, right? Um, and so right now I would categorize Bell Ring Brands ticker symbol BRBR as a work in progress, right? All right, now let's come to uh, Viatris Inc. That's ticker symbol V-T-R-S. Viatris Inc. was spun off from the mother company, Pfizer, in 2020. Now, Viatris basically uh, is the generic brand, uh, generic drug wing of the old uh, Pfizer, and it was spun off to shareholders now, uh, obviously, generic uh, drug makers, uh, their profit margins much, much smaller than the mother company Pfizer and its name brand products. Also, a much slower growing, much more ferocious competition. And of course, uh, Pfizer used the Viatra spinoff to actually discharge a lot of its debt also. Now, in the post spinoff period, the shares of Viatris have lagged those of the mother company, and that would absolutely make sense since it was basically uh, designed to be a way of, of, of Pfizer to get rid of its, you know, its dead weight operations, right? Uh, now, what about Viatris going forward? We don't know. You know, it'll have to obviously compete with other um, generic drug makers. Uh, perhaps it'll rebound We'll see. Okay, now along those lines also is another spinoff company uh, in the drug industry, Organon. That's ticker symbol O G N. Shares I received um, in June of 2021 spun off from Merck and Company. Now Organon makes uh, oncology medications and also medications for uh, human reproduction. Um, I clearly since this is a 
pretty recent uh, spinoff. The, the grade that I would give to it is an incomplete. We have to see. Certainly in the last few months, it has performed pretty much on par with the mother company. Uh, but the long run, we just don't know, right? But, uh, but that's uh, ticker symbol OGN, Organon. Um, we'll see, right? Oncology is a growing field. Uh, reproductive medications, well, we'll see. We'll just have to see. It's everything's incomplete, and 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 Organon uh, has quite a bit of debt, courtesy of the mother company. But uh, but we think that, or certainly I think that this one might be might be a winner. All right. Now the very latest uh, shares that I've received is a company called DT Midstream. That's ticker symbol DTM, which is actually a spinoff from DTE Energy, the uh, utility based uh, out of Michigan, the old Detroit Edison, right? Now, DT Midstream basically operates uh, pipelines uh, and gas services. It also has quite a bit of water, operate water pipelines and water utility uh, services uh, spun off in July of 2021. So it's also kind of like, uh, uh, Organon. It's an incomplete. We just don't know how it will perform versus the mother company going forward or perform versus its immediate competition going forward. But, uh, I will basically keep briefing invest strong viewers on all of these shares, uh, because this is an ongoing right an ongoing project and we'll see we'll just have to see how they uh perform all right so those are my thoughts for this week spinoffs uh can be great sometimes can be terrible uh it all depends upon how the mother company runs it and uh but i'll brief you going forward all right if you found this information insightful please smash that thumbs up button i need you to do that for me thank you also if uh, you have had experiences in spinoffs. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. And of course, subscribe. You, you, and you, all of you, subscribe to Invest Strong. I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, friends, and good blessings.